Hey, thanks so much for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm meteorologist Chris Bianchi. All right, probably enough to tell you that last month here in Denver along the Front Range was an exceptionally rainy month. In fact, it was one of our wettest months on record and going back about 10 years, this was our wettest month since 2013. So uh, a stunningly wet month of May, but I kind of want to break it down for you mostly in terms of statistics, also explain a little bit of the reason why we saw so much of this wet weather just last month. So first of all, the number and the number that really counts. We picked up over five and a half inches worth of rainfall in the month of May in Denver. Officially at DIA, I've also gotten some questions about whether this was just a DIA thing. Uh-uh, this was across the city at the city park station, I should say the Central Park Station uh, the old Stapleton Airport site, this number was 5.50 inches. So basically the exact same thing downtown, we were about 5.4 inches. So no matter how you slice it, we picked up about five and a half inches of rain in Denver just last month. And the average, and by the way, on average, May is the wettest month of the year. So that 2.16 number, that is the highest for any number uh, across the all 12 months. So, so, so this was a, a stunning amount of water. And for a bit of perspective as well, this is about 40% of our average annual rainfall. So over the course of full year, we get about 14 and a half inches worth of rain and melted snow equivalent. And so five and a half inches, that's about 40%, a little less than 40% of our average annual rainfall, a ton of water. And that put it into the record books, not only in terms of wettest maze on record, this was one of the wettest months entirely on record. We picked up 5.53 inches, as I mentioned, and that may, made it our 11th wettest month since 1872. 1872 is when records officially began in Denver, and going back to 1872, May of 2023, number 11 in the record books. And if you notice those bottom two numbers, oh, we came so close to this becoming a top 10 wettest month on record. We only needed seven hundredths of an inch of rain for us to tie July of 1997 for the 10th wettest month on record. And as I mentioned, again, um, many of us um, comparing this to Central Park, and again, these numbers hold true. Uh, downtown Central Park, this was the 11th wettest month, uh, no matter where you take that observation site from. So again, this was no doubt about it. I feel, feel very confident. And most of this water, by the way, here, and I'm going to compare this to the city of Seattle, and I'm going to have an even more sitting stand for you here in just a second. Um, if you compare this to Seattle, uh, Denver picked up about seven times the amount of rainfall that Seattle had last month. Now, worth noting, if you're a little unfamiliar with Seattle's climate, Seattle tends to turn drier this time of year. So Seattle averages actually slightly less rainfall than Denver does during the month of May. So we tend to think of Seattle being gray and rainy, and that's mostly true for the winter months from October to April in Seattle. Come May, June, July, August, and September, that is the dry season for uh, Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. So take this with a little grain of salt, but worth noting, again, five and a half inches worth of rainfall in Denver for it to be seven times the amount of what they got in Seattle, that's especially stunning. And if you want an extra fun stat, Denver picked up more rain then Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., New York, and Chicago combined last month. So, um, which, by the way, speaks to how dry those other cities were, but also for Denver, uh, this was, as I mentioned, a very, very wet month. Now, it's not just Denver. The, the entire Front Range, the entire eastern part of Colorado, getting absolutely walled with a ton of rainfall. And mostly, almost all of that rain came from that one system that we had, that slow-moving low back on May 11th, 12th, 13th, where we picked about four and a half inches of rainfall in Denver from those three days alone. And this was a drought-busting rainfall. Only about 6% of Colorado now, any part of Colorado, is considered to be in drought. Only about 24% is considered to be abnormally dry, which is pre-drought conditions. We basically wiped away the drought with all that water that we just picked up just last month. So for a little context, what you're seeing here, as I mentioned, 6% of Colorado in some form of drought, um, only about 1% is in severe or worse drought. For context, at the start of the calendar year, about 38% of Colorado was considered to be in some form of drought, including, by the way, Denver, and about 30% of Colorado was considered to be in severe or worse drought. So again, we went from about 38% in drought, 30% severe or worse drought, down to 6% in 
in some form of drought and only 1% in severe or worse drought. So we just wiped away the drought and most of that coming from what we saw this month. A, a huge change and uh, Mother Nature just killing it here over the last 60 days or so with all this wet weather. And guess what? This is probably going to continue as we get into the month of June. Overall, the, the, the general trend appears to be that we're gonna stay pretty wet here as we get into the start of June. And reason why, kind of a similar setup to what we just had with the slow moving area low pressure that's gonna kind of trudge its way through our region. And what that means, we're gonna get just basically daily shower and thunderstorm chances for the first week of the month of June. So we've got a lot of wet weather on the way. In fact, taking a look at that seven day forecast, Look at this, rain, rain, followed by more rain, after which we get more rain, and then we'll get more rain after that. So it is gonna be an exceptionally wet period here. Um, and I think it looks to me, if you're planning the weekend ahead, Saturday in particular looks pretty soggy uh, to me at this point. Things do start to dry up for the beginning and middle part of next week, but it stays cool, it stays cloudy. Seeing some of that today, although we've got some sunshine outside right now, and we do have mostly uh, cloudy and showery weather, but. Again, just going back to last month, it was our wettest month since September of 2013, 11th wettest month on record, 4th wettest May on record, picked up about 40% of our average annual rainfall, and Denver picked up more rain than Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and New York City, those six cities combined. Um, and those six cities combined averaged about 17 inches of rain in the month of May, Denver averages about two. So uh, it was a really wet month of May, no matter how you slice it. Again, it doesn't matter where you take that observation site from. In fact, some parts on the south si southeast side of the metro area, out by, say, Kiowa, uh, on west to Elizabeth Parker, southeast side of the metro area, there were some spots that came with about eight, nine inches of rain last month. So um, the DIA number's probably a little bit on the low side if you take a look at the metro area as a whole. It was, whew. It was quite the month and it mostly came from that one big storm that we had in the middle of the month but uh, we also had pretty consistent shower and thunderstorm chances and and days throughout the course of the month of may so it was a wild and very very wet month of may no matter how exactly you slice it hopefully it gives you good context about what we just saw and also looks like it stays wet as we get into the start of june